You have your packet in February yeah. nine draft minutes. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Yes. Um, any corrections, additions, deletions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you. First item on our agenda is Mr. Martin Lewis, 9499 Sessions Road, Road Support, New York, the Two Lot Minor Subdivision. Herb? Uh, this matter had come before the Zoning Board of Appeals because, as you'll see on the uh, proposed subdivision map, uh, one of the lots has no uh, road frontage. Um, and it was granted a variance for the 150 feet of road frontage that would be required on the condition that uh, proof be given to the board that there is deeded access for purposes of ingress and egress. Um, it's intended, as I understand it, to be a transfer from Marty to his son. Um, he has provided us, or provided me, with a copy of the proposed deed from Martin H. Lewis and his wife to his son Michael Lewis and uh, wife. And uh, I've checked over the descriptions. In addition, it does have a provision that for purposes of ingress and egress to the above described property for purposes of creating a common driveway, the party of the first part hereby convey to the party of the second part an easement to run with the land. And then it's got the uh, legal description for um, the access <coughs> easement. The only thing that I saw, and I didn't get a chance to follow up on this, the, the approval was for a 1.5 acre lot. The approval of the CBA? Yeah. You do have the CBA notes in your bag. Yep. Mm -hmm. This 1.5 acre lot, and I'm seeing a 0.99, unless I'm missing something. Joe, did you look at that? To see if it was a one, I know that our approval was a one, you know, maybe Marty knows. Marty, was it 1.5 acres at one point? I, it might have been when uh, they were including uh, the road in there. And uh, when uh, Joe noticed that the line for the road was supposed to go right straight across. So that might have brought it down to an acre. Oh, OK. That's the difference? It might have been, yeah. Because it showed the road? Yeah. So as we, as we put oh, that right. in as then a I'm common fine. Right? Yeah. Fine. So, you're good with this? Yeah. Any questions for her? <coughs> uh, yes, may I ask the applicant what their water source for this house is? Water source for the house? Yep. Is it private or public? It's both. Right now it's private, and then uh, they've got a, a hook up there for the uh, water system that they put in the road. So there's currently, a, it's served by a well, currently? Currently, yeah. Anything else on that? Yes. It cannot legally be served by public water supply because it lacks road frontage. Is there a variant, even though it's a legal Correct. lot? There is. It's with um, the town? right of way is not applicable. It needs to have at least a 20 foot property flag onto it. 20, 20 foot of road frontage. So the water authority will accept the flag lot or has in the past. But it needs road furniture. It cannot be landlocked and pass through. Well, is the size of the lab big enough to keep the well service, Joe, and get a building permit? It's already existing. Oh, it's already existing. Yes. So the, the, the subdivided lot, the sun's lot, who, who's got the water? Who's getting the subdivided? Michael, you are, right? Yeah. And so is there a well on that lot? Yes. So they're already, they already have water, they're just not going to get public they're water, get public. our water. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm being charged for that water now, taxless. You, you're charging me three for three units. And always have since they put the water in up there. Since they put the water main? So I don't know, what the, I don't see where the problem there would be any problem. Well, there's... I've been paying tax on it since... What does that have to do with us? Well, a couple, a couple things. There's. A couple of things I found out today. There was a conflict in with the rules and regs. I mean, so we're. I know the rules and regs. Mm -hmm. Right, but when I'm, when the water district was put in, the water authority policy is one 
pre-tap per parcel. Mm -hmm. In this case, the town's contractor put four pre-taps in for one parcel. I believe they probably saw the structures. That wasn't supposed to happen. So for legal water service, they need road frontage. Mm -hmm. This is a landlocked parcel, so unless there's a 20-foot strip and it can't be a, a right away. Right, I understand that. What is that got to do He doesn't need it. He's got a well. Okay, that's fine. It's just he doesn't have to come on the system, does he? No, he doesn't have to come on the system. Well, I'm should just, you be charging me for it? Or well, not? that's something you have to work out. No, I'm just, I'm just pointing that out. That's that this will never to be able downtown, to be legally served. Yeah. Well, no, I've been down here to the town, and I've, I've told them that, that you've been charging me all along for three units. And I've only got the one hooked up. Because the water yes, board... Yes, there's only one. Yeah. yeah. There's one. one that's not here. Yeah. Marty, I'll help I just want to make sure you have water so we can give you the two lot subdivision that you came in here for. Yeah. Okay. Um, you do want that to happen, right? I would like that to very All right, so yeah. that's where we're headed. Yeah, my, my other concern is with the survey that it is not accurate. It shows an edge of pavement on the right hand side, which would be the eastern side of the garage, and there is no pavement. There's a stand of trees there, and I don't know why it says that. It shows what? It there says edge of pavement on the survey. And there is... On the back, Marty, is a lot. Well, they've had a huge issue. Well, I don't know what it is. All the way around. I think he made a mistake. I think it's supposed to be edge of tree line, perhaps, because <laughs> it's all trees back there. I don't know why he had pavement. Yeah, there's no tree. Uh, pavement. That's all, that's all if you right. follow it, yeah, it says yeah, edge of lawn down below too. So yeah, it so it looks like a yeah, because there's no pavement on the side of the garage. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah, except for it's that vegetation. Mm -hmm. So and and on the location plan, they show a flag lot instead of just the subject lot. But so I just had some, you know, found some issues with the stamp survey that it wasn't. Fully correct, but that, that was that's it. That's all I have. I don't have any problem. Any other questions or concerns on this? A motion? I'll make a motion. To approve? Second. Just check it. <laughs> I come from the Ellis Alia School of Women and Eating Along. Uh, any other comments or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Well, I think Liz, Liz's comment should be noted on it. Well, they are. They're in the they're in our minutes. minutes. No, so it's taken care of here. Well, let's go. No, it's taken care of here. Yeah. Well, Thank you very much, Andrew Subdivision. This is done. Okay. Next item on our agenda is Mr. Larry Adler. Uh, New Harvard Office Group Preliminary Site Plan Review for a proposed four-story, 85-room hotel and a restaurant of approximately 3,000 square feet on Woods Park Drive, New York. New York. We can put this on an easel because we got to set up as a flip chart and that way we'll, we'll bug you too much. Where do you want to do that? Like right this corner facing the other one's facing this way or I'm going to put it over there? Were they? Hey. Someone had to turn it off. Well, if you get here earlier, I need to see if I'm going to die. I'm going to take my glasses off so it's like you. Two posts, Julius. Yes. So, just uh, this is the existing uh, Hampton Inn and Suites. Uh, here, which has uh, been open up since July of 12, it's doing well. And uh, so, what we're talking about is the adjacent land that surrounds it, um, creating two separate parcels, uh, about a six tenths of an acre parcel for a small restaurant uh, that would contain around 2,400 square feet and about uh, 3.6, 3.2 acres for. Um, a hotel at the 85 rooms, and for a point of reference, the uh, Hampton Inn and Suites is 87 rooms. Uh, this would be uh, for an extended stay concept on four floors. Um, and then I'll 
I'll turn it over to Matt. He can go through the specifics of the site plan. So essentially, uh, with regards to the restaurant piece, uh, we're providing 32 parking spaces for the hotel piece, 110 that conforms to the zoning requirements. Uh, talking to uh, fire, we've got a 26-foot uh, aisle for ability for the fire truck to make proper movements around. Uh, we would like to discuss with the board a little bit with regards to the code requirement of the dead end parking with regards to um, the code requires this big bulb. Uh, they don't allow essentially a backing movement for the parking itself. Um, in an environmental sense and where we're trying to reduce asphalt, that's kind of creating a, a big a, a chunk of, uh, we think, kind of a wasted asphalt use where uh, anyone who is uh, in this back parking lot of these 13 spaces they're just going to come out and take a back and move it. Typically, we just leave a little bulb end here. Um, so we'd like to kind of discuss that, but that, that is in the code, so we show it to be in conformance with that. Um, Stormwater wise, I'm going to quickly go quickly just review this, and I know Chris is here to uh, take a look at uh, our stormwater piece. Just going to go to the grading plan so I can explain what we're doing here. This site is. Um, It, part of an active <coughs> stormwater pollution prevention plan, uh, active speedies permit uh, with regards to the previous work and the ongoing industrial park. Uh, therefore, we are satisfying what we call the old regs, the, two, the, the 2011 regs, uh, a wet pond design, but we still have to take care of the water quality element. The existing pond, which was uh, previously reviewed and accepted, uh, which is includes the development of the larger uh, industrial park that is inclusive of the impervious area here. Um, we're going to do a quick little mitigation of uh, the existing wet pond system, open it up uh, a little bit uh, into the west direction, get a greater uh, what's called the uh, wet pool area down below and essentially have the, the appropriate volume. It was uh, memorialized in a, a, a complete uh, redesign of the, uh, the SWIP for the program itself. So just wanted to kind of go over that because there will be some work going on with regards to that stormwater basin um, to, uh, to deal with that. Um, the landscape aspects with this, uh, our proposed tree count versus uh, the, to the total requirement uh, our proposed trees are not quite the total, but as everyone, everyone is aware, hopefully underneath the power easement, there's the old apple orchard, and the the in, the in total of the tree count within our proper site does does meet the landscaping code requirements. But we've got a pretty um, thorough landscaping piece within the site plan set itself, um, fully detailed with the genus and species of those vegetation pieces. Um, but doing a pretty decent job here along uh, Woods Park Drive, frontage pieces for both the, the hotel and the uh, restaurant. And then as well in the separation between the two hotels, again providing both um, some shade tree areas and some uh, lower ornamental type of trees. And again some, some other bushes and some other uh, trees, making it real nice uh, with regards to the landscape aspect. And back in here where we're not showing proposed trees because the existing trees and we're not grading back in here. So we, we're meeting those landscape requirements. Again, we don't want to, you know, belabor these points. So we're here to answer questions. Um, we got a full set of plans here. Hopefully, we can uh, address all those. Joe, um, they've uh, done everything I asked. Uh huh. Um, there's been quite a few changes since I know that the initial concept. Um, so you're satisfied with and how the Tom Colts met? Yeah, I mean, he's, he mentioned the turnaround. He mentioned the landscaping. Those are subject to your description. Mm -hmm. Chris, did you show the, an existing floor bay or an existing riprap channel and then a mm -hmm. contract to install the new floor bay? What's happening with that existing riprap channel? It kind of shows it bypass, and I know that was one of our questions. Um, e essentially, the, uh, the, there's no real uh, grading or other improvements here, so that, that uh, riprap channel will still remain, uh, and that's really carrying a lot of the drainage coming back from the backside of the existing hotel and, uh, and essentially providing um, the uh, protection of the steepness as we're approaching into that floor bay and into the uh, mitigation pool itself. So we're not looking at impact and we're going to leave it. So then what's going into the floor bay? If the riprap channel is carrying the water past the floor bay? Well, essentially what 
that that overall riprap channel brings it in, but as well provides essentially the overflow kind of. I mean, it kind of goes down so twofold. Okay. Twofold, yeah. So it shows it continuous on a planimetric view, but it's kind of going in okay. and coming back out. Right. Right. You know, just a comment uh, related to the landscaping. What we're going to do here, we're going to probably have a standard now. We're going to put trees along with Park Drive. Uh, so this is the creating this new parcel. So it will extend from the driveway of the Hampton, and we'll have nice big trees like every 10 or 15 feet, and we'll probably continue that through the park, as well as uh, putting in the sidewalk which when we did the Hampton Inn, the, the uh, couple of the comments were, was as the development would occur, the sidewalk would grow. So both of those are addressed. Anything else from, from your end, Chris? No. You're satisfied with the plan as it's presented at this preliminary level? Herb? Um, I had, my only comments were on the uh, subdivision with regard to cross easements for ingress and egress, okay, which so has been addressed by uh, Carol Zenzel, who is uh, Larry's counsel, has already spoken to me and provided me with a draft of the cross easements. Uh, questions for what area? So that you can access throughout. Well, we're going to do that next. Okay. See number four. There's a subdivision application. I just by, once I have Dory set it up, I guess maybe the future. Well, yeah. maybe I should have thought about some subdivision first. Oh I don't think it matters. Um, any questions or concerns from planning board members regarding yeah, the um, Water quality, you mentioned you no, I have didn't. adequate water quality. Have you also addressed water quality? Quantity, so yes, quantity. essentially the old design, you have the permanent pool which provides the water quality aspects and then the upper berm essentially, it provides the water quantity. So this, this is fully uh, designed for this area for a 100 year event. Okay. Mitigation from a 100 year event based on not the pre-development when this was the apple orchard and uh, before even the road put in. So that this was an ongoing stormwater analysis from 2009 time frame. So just, I mean, I'm sorry, Julius, on the initial uh, approval for the, the park in general, you had to deal with the stormwater issue and those earliest right. plants. Right. And so th This was a result of that? Yes. Yeah. So essentially how it works is since we have an active permit, we are grandfathered in with regards to those particular regs of the 2009 time frame, where now we're under the two, 2015 requirements every five years, DC ups the ante essentially. Um, and um, but we are grandfathered in but the, the essence of it is um, we're providing a, a water quality and water quantity element that, that meet the meet the standards so, so then you're also going to be set when you say you're grandfathered in you're grandfathered in for infrastructure but not for stormwater pollution prevention and filing notice of intent? We still, the notice of intent is active, it's already been filed, we have an active speedies permit associated with the development. So we're, we are a member of the program and have been since 2009. And it'll come out in the next month to go through, but uh, the ship over requirements with the new stormwater. Um, that was taken care of at that time as well and you know that deals with yeah, the archaeology. But again, when, when the overall industrial park this even goes back to the, uh, the Hartford development, uh, the first hotel, and the road system, the infrastructure that we, we uh, were involved with Larry at that point in time, and all of that was vetted in part of the seeker analysis at that time. Thank you. Uh, yes? Small question. Um, on C6, are the cross hatches handicapped parking? Uh, those would be the accessible routes for the handicapped parking. Okay, do you have any designated ones or am I premature? Uh, they would be right next to that. It must be on the layer they got frozen off. It's right here, there should be two. And so essentially, wherever those crosshatch areas are, there'll be handicapped spaces on both sides. So there'll be um, handicap uh, access lane handicap. I apologize, it uh, was a layer management issue. When uh, So there's uh, two spaces over by the restaurant and there are um, four spaces for the hotel. No, I'm sorry, there's five spaces. Okay, so when you get to the restaurant, I... There are more and more handicapped people, so... Oh yeah, no, they're on C3. If you go to C3... Okay, good. They're, they're there. I looked at six. 
Yeah, there you can kind of see the little blue areas, the little the little uh, handicap guys. It's on the layout plan, and somehow on that, the C6 is the uh, utility or grading plan. Okay, I see them now. Yep. So we've got. I apologize. I miscounted two, four, six, eight. That's good. And then total of ten on the entire site. Okay. Um, okay. When you get to the restaurant, you're a little sparse. Okay. It's and in conformance with the else? ADA standards, so I mean, we, we can talk about it as we go through, but that does conform with ADA standards for 32, 32 required spaces and 2,400 square foot building. I, we'd have room to add one or two more if the board's Well, I, you know, um, you're in close proximity to a, a um, handicapped athletes. Mm -hmm. And that would mean they would have needs if they used your hotel, restaurant. Any other questions? Um, just a concern or comment that um, the, if you look at the restaurant on the far left, the, the last parking spot, there's not really a backup area. You'd almost have to sort of go straight in a little, there's typically a bump out to make a turning move when you back out. We can add that in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I agree. Good point. Okay. Let's see what you're talking about. Yeah, thank you. Anything else, Liz? Any, anybody else? Well, the first motion for this project would be if someone's so inclined, preliminary approval. I'll move. And a second? I think you both. Any further comments <coughs> or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you. The next item on our, oh, I'm sorry, in the second, the, the second sorry. motion we need is one declaring uh, the Norfolk Planning Board Lead Agency for a coordinated review under SECRA. I'll make the motion. A second. Any discussion regarding that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you. I call you here. You thought I was sleeping. You thought I was sleeping. I was fussing you. Next item is Mr. Larry Adler, New Hartford Office Group, Minor Three Lot Subdivision for a parcel containing approximately 3.6 acres and a parcel for a restaurant for approximately 0.6 acres. Subdivision, one lot. Well, I'm sorry, three lot. Um, sorry. The uh, <coughs> lot number one is for the restaurant parcel, which is about six tenths of an acre. Um, lot two is for the uh, hotel, which is about 3.2 acres, and then um, the uh, third lot is the uh, the parent lot, which the hotel and and the uh, is coming out of. So. Three lot subdivision. The easements that uh, Carol and Herb are discussing are for ingress. Well, you can see them. If, if you look at this one, um, you'll see that this driveway appears to come along the Hampton Inn entryway and not a town road. You also see this cut back in here where people are going to be coming. This is a separate lot, so you have to have deeded access, and the deeded access is going to be provided by cross easements. I'm sorry. So it, it's easier to see on this section. Um, so it's for ingress and egress, and then um, the uh, stormwater uh, parcel over here also needs some easement agreements. So the, the hotels both uh, drain into the uh, into the stormwater basin, which is owned by New Hartford Office Group, and that's why we need easements for that. And I'm sorry, did you get those easements? Yes, or? I have them. I haven't finished reviewing them, but they look fine at this point. 
Any uh, Joe and Kevin's in this? No. That means town code. Setbacks are good. The middle of the lot size is good. Anything from you on this one, Chris? Thank you. Any questions from board members? Comments? Uh, motion to approve the three lot minor subdivision. So moved. So a second. Thank you. Any further comments or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we're done.